Hello, I'm the Media Whiz, because when our forum wasn't enough, and I'm live at Indie PopCon. I can finally leave the house. Anyway, let's talk about something My Little Pony related, because I haven't done that in a while, because Pony Fanboy's taken over that. But anyway, let's do another crossover comic. My Little Pony meets the Transformers, Friendship in Disguise. You know, the last time I reviewed a crossover comic for these videos, it was one of my favorite reviews to do. The Cartoon Network crossover comic event, Super Secret Crisis War, which brought together five different Cartoon Network shows in one big six-issue series involving Samurai Jack, Ben 10, Powerpuffs, Dexter, and the Eds getting beamed aboard a spaceship and they have to take on their enemies, as well as an army of robot duplicates. There's also some side comics, which I did a quick vlog on, involving five other shows in the CN Cinematic universe, which were also pretty good. Not only were those comics done by IDW, but also this one was, mainly because IDW always does the My Little Pony and Transformers comics anyway. And so we come to Hasbro's bread and butter, the multicolored magical equines and the alien automatons that disguise themselves as vehicles and other pieces of machinery. Friendship in Disguise is a four-issue miniseries that led into a sequel miniseries titled The Magic of Cybertron, these comics being about the Autobots and Decepticons traveling to Equestria, and the sequel series involving the ponies arriving in Cybertron. The comics were released earlier this year under IDW, and from what I've gathered, a lot of the crew were regulars from the MLP and Transformers comics before this, like the artists of this issue, Tony Fleek and Lauren Perry, are regulars on Pony Comics. Some of the others have also cut their teeth in the comic industry before for this with experience from every major comic company, it seems, like the writer, James Amos, and the letterer, Jake M. Woods. Last interesting bit to note, some of the people who've worked on this comic actually have a decent amount of video game comics under their belts. Like one of the writers, Ian Flynn, and the artist, Jack Lawrence, have had a hand in several Sonic the Hedgehog and Mega Man comics before this. And apparently, Lawrence worked on a Transformers Star Trek crossover comic in 2018, as well as some Doctor Who comics under the BBC for two years. So what happens when you take the two biggest franchises that Hasbro currently owns and put them together in one comic? Well, let's find out. This is My Little Pony Transformers Friendship in Disguise, Issue 1. Well, the cover is definitely hyping things up with this glory shot of Optimus Prime in the main six in a group shot, with Megatron looking menacing in the background. Pretty well done in terms of the art, and it's made better with these pictures they put during the credits for things to come. Just get a good eyeful of this. Giant robots and cutesy horses in the same frame. The story itself begins with Patton Oswalt Pony nitpicking a crossover comic that he just bought at a comic stand. See, this is why these nonsense crossover stories shouldn't even happen. What continuity is this supposed to take place in? <laughs> what a nerd. What nerd wastes time reading crossover comic books. <laughs> Shut up. And what comic is he reading that warranted such a reaction? Daring Do meets the Power Ponies. Okay, anybody else curious to see what that would have looked like? The plot gets going when Queen Chrysalis shows up, and she declares that she will rule Equestria once she acquires outside assistance from other changelings. And she opens a portal using magic from a small group of other changelings. Of course, she's going to try and get outside assistance from the world of Littlest Pet Shop. Now, before I read this, I actually didn't know if this was supposed to be before they redeemed the changelings and the continuity, but with Quibble Pants being there and later the student six appearing in issue four, it does take place after the events of season six. So I'm willing to believe that these changelings are some kind of rebel group that are actually still loyal to Chrysalis. Well, a small group of changelings actually being evil and still being aligned with Chrysalis still makes more sense than all of them turning pure of heart and turning into reindeer people made out of Play-Doh. As they open the portal in the sky, we cut over to Cybertron, where it's just another day of Autobots and Decepticons fighting it out, as it seems the Decepticons are trying to get their hands on a space bridge. We'll stop them, Optimus. The only thing you'll be stopping, Autobum, is another Starscream ego trip. Good! Yeah, uh, Starscream, not to put you down, but you really gotta work on your trash talk. I mean, Autobum, seriously? Shockwave says the space bridge doesn't seem faulty like they once thought. It activates and, you guessed it, it zaps the bots into Equestria. And apparently leaving Grimlock behind. Yeah, meet Grimlock ready to... Aw, oh, friends ditch Grimlock again? It's okay, Grimlock. You'll get him next time. Twilight and some royal guards show up to put an end to Chrysalis' evil, but it seems the damage is already done, as the Autobots and Decepticons fall from the sky. Uh, Optimus, are my optics busted, or are we plummeting to our surprisingly colorful doom? It's probably the best possible reaction to have in that scenario. What are you exactly, and how can you be of use to me? Amusing. I was about to ask precisely the same. 
And together, they formed the greatest alliance known as Every Villain is Lemons. As the robots plummet to the ground, we establish some stories that will be fleshed out in some of the later issues, like Rainbow Dash coming across Windblade, which will be expanded upon in issue 3. And then we catch up with Twilight as she saves Optimus and Bumblebee from crashing. And the reason that she's so trusting of them is because she notices a moment of genuine friendship and teamwork between the two. And naturally, both parties are rightfully confused to see each other. The Autobots confused about the brightly colored magical horses, and Twilight confused by the giant sentient technology that can turn into cars. And I gotta say, this image of Optimus holding Twilight in his palm is incredibly adorable. And then it's made even better with the image below of Chrysalis riding Megatron's tank form. Okay, everything in this comic was pretty good up until this point, but um, that just made it worth it. I mean, you can't really beat evil bug horse thing riding on tank. So, we're going to have to put the adventure of Twilight, Optimus, and Bumblebee on hold, because these comics actually hold two stories in one book. And we need to show some other characters getting introduced to each other. So now let's cut over to the other story, Shine Like a Diamond, where we see Starscream being dressed in royal attire by Rarity and her fashionista friends. Under threat of death, of course. Happy healthy subjects show just how good their king is, don't they? Bah! You will serve me and know your place! Huh, and yet Starscream still seems less of a prima donna than when Sombra temporarily got power in the Season 9 premiere. And I'm one of the few people that liked Sombra as a villain. Have you ever considered using that charm technique you used on that dragon all the way back in Season 1? Now I ain't saying she a gold digger. Soon enough, Starscream is taken down a peg when RC shows up. Starscream swears he'll be back with backup as the two ladies get to know each other. Are you alright, my little pony? Oh, oh, she said it! She said the thing! She said it! She said the thing! R.C. offers to clean things up, but she admits she's probably not the best equipped for the job, and she starts over with a proper introduction. I'm R.C. of the Autobots, and you are? Quite taken aback, to be honest. Oh my, but I do go on. My name is Rarity. The girls get to know each other a little bit better, as R.C. explains that the Autobots are sworn defenders and protectors of the innocent against the Decepticons, and Rarity begins to tell of the adventures that she's been on and how she's stopped things like the Diamond Dogs and Hydras, Conquerors and Demigods, all the while being fabulous. As it seems, the two girls consider themselves kindred spirits. Ah, characters are bonding. That's so sweet. The bonding is soon broken up as Starscream and some other aerial Decepticons show up and begin shooting up the block. RC says that she'll take them down, but Rarity jumps in using her magic to shield her. Naturally, they win as the squadron of Decepticons are defeated. Idiot! How dare you lose to an Autobot and a pony! And that's something I never thought I'd ever hear Starscream say. The girls finish them off by getting some last shots in, and Rarity uses a giant piece of fabric to wrap around them, blinding them, and they crash down in the process. And we end with some congratulations and a bro hoof. And we are friends, aren't we, darling? Fast friends, for sure. And even though I'm not going to be reviewing the issues after this, they also are pretty good, so here's a little bit of a highlights reel of what happens in those issues. While Spike fanboys over Grimlock, they both take out the construction cons, Pinkie Pie and Gage host a cooking show, and unsurprisingly, Pinkie is not at all phased by the giant robots, because it's Pinkie Pie, don't question it. Fluttershy and Discord take on Shockwave and his animal Decepticons, in which Fluttershy sways them into being more peaceful, and even Shockwave has a minor change of heart, as well as a fourth wall gag referencing message boards. Yeah, they definitely knew who was going to be reading these comics. Windblade and Rainbow Dash have a race to see who's faster as they take out Misfire. The Apple family, with the aid of Discord, take on the Insecticons who are eating their apples, and we end with a grand scale fight between the Autobots and Ponies versus the Decepticons and the Changelings, including a self-aware reference to Hasbro putting an orange tip on Megatron's gun barrel back in the day. So that was My Little Pony Transformers Friendship in Disguise issue 1, and I really enjoyed it. The artwork is very good, capturing both art styles pretty well. It really helps to have artists from other MLP and Transformers comics on staff to do that. The character interactions are very well done, which is what I like to see in a good crossover story. Make the character interactions entertaining and you have a really good crossover on your hands. They actually did a good job pairing certain characters together, like RC with Rarity for example. It's also pretty good ways to link the villains together since the Changelings and the Decepticons can transform into things and are also known for being very deceptive. Overall, this did what a good crossover miniseries of comics should do. It doesn't go on too long or overstay its welcome, with only four issues to speak of. Cons Consistently entertaining, and it gave me exactly what I was looking for in a crossover with My Little Pony and Transformers. If you're a fan of both franchises and you want to see an official crossover event, check out these comics when you get the chance. So far, out of all the crossover comics I've looked at, I think IDW has had a pretty good track record up until now, so props to them on that. I'm the media whiz, because one art form wasn't enough, and uh... Oh crap, wait. 
forgot I was going to be meeting someone. Enjoying the convention so far, kid? Oh, well, you know, it just feels good to get out of the house and spend more time with you guys. I mean, I spend so much time on playing a goofball, I feel like I hardly ever get to interact with you guys anymore. So, what were you up to? Uh, you know, just finished this review of this uh, My Little Pony Transformers comic. Ooh, did you like it? Was it good? Here, read for yourself, see if you enjoy it. <laughs> oh man, cool. Didn't you say something about you thought this was pre-season six because of the changelings and all? I just don't get it. Like, in the show, you had it that all the changelings turned good, and Chrysalis was the only one that was evil still, but like in this comic, she has a small alliance of changelings that are still loyal to her, so I didn't know if it was supposed to be like... Oh geez, Wiz, you really need to catch up on your continuity. I mean, do you even read the comics? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I walked right into that one, didn't I? <laughs>